and who you are to us. Father, today I ask that you release your spirit of revelation so that your people might understand what is being said to them today. God, I pray that you open up the hearts and open up the ears and open up the minds of every listener in the house today. Father, I praise you for the word that you have planted in my heart. And I pray, Lord God, that after today, your people will better understand the church and you. So it's in your son's Jesus name that I pray. Amen. And amen. Before you sit down, we want to go to Acts chapter 5. And we're only going to read a couple of scriptures, but... Acts chapter 5 is right at the beginning of the birth of the church. And there were the, the, the disciples and the people of God decided that they would sell their possessions and distribute it to the apostles and the prophets so that, you know, no, no one would be in want, that they'd all have things all in common. But Ananias and Sapphira decided that they wanted to do things their way. So the Holy Ghost came in and told them, we can't start the church like this. We all know the story that Ananias and the Holy Ghost took the life of Ananias and Sapphira so that that Leaven would not spread throughout the beginning of the church. And we're going to read verse 11. And after that happened in verse 11, a great fear came upon all the church and upon as many as heard these things. And by the hands of the apostles were many signs and wonders wrought among the people. And they were all with one accord in Solomon's porch. You can take your seat. Praise God this morning. Thank God for you being here this morning. Uh, there's something I want to share with you that the Lord shared with me. And I believe if we want to go beyond where we are now, it'll help us understand some things. I want to talk to you today about for real scrap the program if you want to be for real scrap the program that means cancel out the program what i mean by the program is we have a set that we come to church we we know what we're going to do when we come to church for real if you want for real scrap the program and the lord said to me um that in order for the people to understand where I'm coming from today, I have to first tell them that you don't need me to be successful. That's what the Lord said. You don't need me to be successful. I did not die so that you can be successful in the world. There are talented people that has gone on to the grave with their talent. And then there's others that have used their talent to be successful. The Lord said, you are created. You were created with ability. So you don't need me to die that you might have ability to get ahead in life. That's not why I came and I suffered. He said to me, I came for more. He said, we often quote John 10 and 10. Satan has come to destroy. 
to steal, kill, and destroy. But I have come that you have life and have life more abundantly. And we think that life more abundantly means that he came so we could have abundant in things. But it doesn't mean that he came for us to have an abundance of things, to be able to enjoy abundantly the things of the world. He said, you didn't need me to come for that. You can work hard and get that. You can go to college and get that. You can make connections and get that. The more abundantly that he was talking about, he says, it means a life abounding with joy, strength for your spirit and your soul. Things don't give you joy and strength, but he came to give you abundance of joy, strength for your soul and body. Romans 14, 17 say the kingdom of God is not about eating and drinking and getting stuff. It's about joy and peace and righteousness in the Holy Ghost. I'm going somewhere with this. Uh, I've, the Lord told me as I was sitting there, you're going to channel a little bit of bishop today. He came, he died so that your mind would be right. So that you would be in good mental health. You didn't see him coming to give the uh, people in the Bible two donkeys instead of one. Or that they might live in a bigger tent. No, he came to heal the sick and the oppressed. But the kind of abundant life that he came for, came for is only realized when you're born again. In a new relationship with God and a new motivation for living. The Lord reminded me when Bishop and I, before we received the Holy Ghost, we were some messed up people. Our marriage was messed up. Our life was messed up. We didn't have nothing. The old people used to say didn't have a pot. We were so messed up that when we went to counseling, the chaplain told, told me, you might as well go on and get on the plane and go back to the States because you two will never work out. We were just that messed up. But then I ran into my tornado hunting partner from Texas. We used to get our beers and get in that little Volkswagen and go hunt tornadoes. And I met her in England of all places. And when I met her, she had a joy on her that I didn't see when we were out drinking. That I didn't see when we were chasing tornadoes. It was something a different about what they had. And I said, I want that. That's what I want. Little did I know Bishop was saying the same thing. We didn't care about, let me tell you this, we didn't care about our marriage. We just wanted that that they had. God said the marriage will come if you get what they got. We didn't have nothing until the Holy Ghost came upon us. And when the Holy Ghost came upon us, we saw differently. We weren't trying to buy the new stereos that all the people on the base had and the Volvos that everybody had. We just wanted more of him. We became like mad men and women. I don't mean violent. I mean we were just so zealous and hot for the Lord. That we wanted everybody that came in our orbit to get what we had. One of my co-workers used to call me the Bible Bible. Because everything I did was based on the Bible. If it didn't line up with the Bible, we didn't want any part of it. But Bishop would always say, if it's in the Bible, it can happen today. 
And if you don't believe it, just on that page, rip it out of your Bible. You don't need that page. Because we believe every word in the Bible. We stood on every word, everywhere, and in every place we went. We believe that God wanted everybody to have this. And we let people know that God wanted everybody to have this. Some of y'all been there. When you first got saved, your family didn't like to see you coming around. Because you wanted them to have what you had. And you weren't taking no stuff. That's why we were mad men. We not changed, but today you see a more matured, toned down version of a mad man. We just as intense and zealous as we were about the word. And this is through whom First United was born. Birth through our obedience but founded on the doctrine of the apostles and the prophets, founded on the Bible. And with that, the Lord said to me, that's why the people are different, because we are an apostolic church. And not, not, not the denomination apostolic, but the church built on the apostles and the prophets. We are apostolic people. Because there is something in us. There's a power that works in us and through us that built the foundation, that built upon the foundation that the apostles and the prophets laid. We are apostolic people. That's who we really are. And if I might have a subtitle, I would say that is our heritage. And if y'all know what a heritage is, it's something that belongs to you by reason of birth. We are an apostolic people because we've been born again. Anybody in here been born again? Whether you believe it or not, you have an apostolic heritage. Jesus told us that what I do, greater things will you do. He wasn't talking about an individual. He was talking about the church going to do greater things than he did. And when Jesus said those words, he was, the power of God was moving through him. He was anointed with the Holy Ghost and power, healing all those that are oppressed of the devil. That is our apostolic heritage. What is wrong with us in the church now? We don't realize our apostolic heritage. We think our heritage is about getting things and living happy, being successful. But our apostolic heritage is to do the great things, the greater things that Jesus did. The early church walked in this apostolic heritage. That's why Ananias and Sapphira couldn't get away with what they did. Because the man of God said, you did not lie to me, you lied to the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Ghost should live in the church. The Bible says that great fear came upon all of them. And where were they sitting? They were all on one accord in Solomon's porch. Solomon's porch was that outer courtyard where anybody could come. And where anybody could come, signs and wonders were working and operating through the ordinary average person. Because things happen when people get on one accord. The problem with us as a church today, and this is going to help us, we think We've tried this one accord thing. It doesn't seem to work. We tried the prayer thing. It doesn't seem to work. But we major on the misses, the things that have not happened. But we were never promised that everything we did was going to, everything we asked for was going to happen. Every time we laid hands on somebody, they were going to be healed. He just told us to lay hands. 
He just told us to pray and leave the rest to him. But there are things that have happened, and we fail to praise him for the things that have happened. There are things that have happened. You've made it through some of the worst pain you had in your life. That happened. You made it through the grief you had that you thought you wouldn't recover from. That happened. You walked away from dangerous things. That happened. You made it through COVID. That happened. And you made it through some rough times in your life. That happened. In 35 years here at First United, I've seen more happen than missed. That's our apostolic heritage. More have happened. But it's something about our minds that we don't let it change so that we can think about, what is that song? Weigh your blessings, count your blessings. You know, your blessings are too numerous to count. I don't know if that's the way the song goes. But a lot of times we major on what we don't have. And we miss all the stuff that we do have. I've seen more things that happen. I look at you and I see happenings. Because some of y'all started out with us 35 years ago. And I remember. And I see the happen. And I see where the praises ought to be right now because it happened for you. It's our apostolic heritage. And you know what our apostolic heritage is? We got the Holy Ghost. He gave that to us. We got the power of God in us. The Holy Ghost. What is our apostolic heritage with the Holy Ghost? Well, it's not kind of like Peter. When Peter saw the lame man, he didn't, he didn't pray, God, can you fix this man? He's lame. He needs a healing, God. God, can you do it? We're praying right now that you do it, God. God, we believe in you. We trust in you. Heal this man. No, his apostolic heritage was such as I have, I give unto you. Rise. Because he had the Holy Ghost in him. The power of God in him. When Paul saw somebody, you know, I get mad when the devil, I get mad with the devil. But when Paul saw some, a woman following him with the devil, with that evil spirit, he didn't say, Lord, please deliver this woman from this evil spirit. Deliver her, please, God. I've been praying for her for years and she hadn't changed a bit. No, Paul turned around and said, come out of her. Because he has that apostolic heritage of the Holy Spirit. We all have it. We all have it. That's the part you don't understand. If you got the Spirit of God in you, why y'all always begging God to do something? Why you begging God? God, open up their ears that they might understand what you're trying to say. Yeah. How much more do you need to give them? Oh, ye of little faith, how long must I be with you? I'm living in you and you still want more. I mean, this, is what he, this is what he said to me. He said, the church it's all messed up. And I, I mean, that's not a criticism too much. This is what the Lord said. He said, the church is all messed up because it's forgot what it's about. The world can get you success, but the world cannot heal diabetes. The world can get you the money you need, but the world can't straighten this crooked hand. The world can put you on the top but the world cannot heal lupus. That's the church's job. That's what the church is for, to do things that the world cannot do. You got the world and it's got a lot of stuff that it 
can give you, but the church needs to be about what the church is here for. Thirty-five years and counting. We've been praying, Lord, I'm hungry for you. Feel this place, Lord. And the Lord is saying, I am omnipresent. If you would just do what you're supposed to do, you will see me show up. Come on now. See, y'all don't, y'all don't want to know what the church is really about. Because you're still praying that the Lord will save your husband. Or you're still praying the Lord will save your wife. Yes, he came to save. But what did he say? The unbelieving husband can be sanctified by the believing wife. You got something to do. Bishop and I are still hungry for all that the Bible say we can have. Hungry for all that the Bible say we can do. And you say, why don't y'all do it? Well, did y'all hear what I said? They were on the porch on one accord. If the God wanted to make some celebrities healing everybody, this is a church thing. Don't be putting it on the pastor and the first lady to heal you. It's a church thing. On one accord. Lord said to me, to say to you, I know everybody not going to want this. But what I want you to do is just scrap the program. If you want it, scrap the program. Because the church is not a social club. It's not a place where you make connections. Except with God. The church ain't going to feed you, clothe you. That's God's. He said, I feed you, I clothe you. The church is here to operate and do things that the world cannot do. Satan told Jesus, the world, all of this can be yours. All of this. All you got to do is bow down. What does that tell me? That Satan had some stuff in the world to give us. And what does the church have to offer? We cannot go by the same program we've always gone by. We talk about a generation of kids. We're losing a generation of kids. It's not the kids' fault. We're not losing them. God's still trying to raise them up in the midst of our ignorance. In the midst of what we don't do. And this isn't a hard message. This is a message to get the church in the posture where it belongs, so that when those, the next wheelchair run through here, the power of the Holy Ghost, you won't be afraid to say, I might not have what you came here for today, but such as I have, I give unto you. Rise up and walk, my brother. Rise up and walk, my sister. We won't need so many mental health professionals. We won't need them. Because the Bible says Jesus had the power to heal all those that were oppressed. Oppressed is a mental thing. It's a head thing. It's a mind thing. The church is here to heal all of those that are oppressed of the devil. It's not here to feed you natural food. It's not here to give you money. Not here to buy you another car, give, do, do a car giveaway. It's to do what God established it to do. Before I leave this earth, I'm seven, almost 70. Am I 70 yet? My grandson asked me, how many more years do you think you got? I said, well, I hope I got at least 15. At least 70 plus 15 is 85, but I might squeeze a couple more out of that. (laughs) 
But if the church is operating like the church, I might make it to a hundred. They don't care if I make it to a hundred, Matt. Good for you if you make it, sister. Good for you. Good for you. I'm happy for you. I'm happy for you. Church don't even know when to praise God when he say something. I'm happy for you. I hope you do make it. But if you, if you count on me to straighten up, I don't know if you're going to make it. The Bible says, by the hands of the apostles and the prophets were many signs and wonders dug among the people. Now get me right. All of y'all are not apostles and prophets. Y'all need to just loose the apostles and the prophets. How you loose them? Get on one accord so that God can do with them what he want to do. Get on one accord. You want your mind straight, get on one accord so the apostle and the prophet can work signs and wonders like the Bible says. And he says, you know, you know what? You don't even have to be an apostle or a prophet to do what I want you to do. All you got to do is be available. Just be a, you don't have to be perfect. You don't have to just be just right. Just be available. Move when I say move. Lay hands when I say lay hands. Smile when I say smile. Hug when I say hug. Give when I say give. All you gotta do, and you will see mighty signs and wonders rock among you. I think some of us out there want these signs and wonders. He said the Gentiles seek after those clothes, the money, all the stuff the world have to offer. But if you seek the kingdom of God, I will give you those things. You already have those things. And why aren't the people seeking the kingdom of God? I'm about ready to go. Because the church people are praying, God, you do it. God, it's up to you. God, we can't make it without you. Even though you put all this power in us, we can't make it without you. You know what? I just hope the Lord would just put a fire in your belly so hot you won't be able to. I'm already in you and working through you. Just burn them up, Lord. Burn them up. Burn them up so they'll know you there. Y'all know I get like this sometimes. Just pray for me. I got a good 15 more years and I want to see this thing happen. And I ain't waiting 15 years. I want to be able to enjoy it while it's happening. I'll give y'all maybe two or three years. Maybe. Prayerfully it'll be two or three months, but maybe. Because the power of God. Now, wait. I just want to see the hands of the people that feel like the Spirit of God lives in them. Just let me see the hand. My God, my God. Look at all this power. Look at all this power. All this power. Y'all ought to be ashamed. All this power. And you on your knees begging God to give you something he's already put in you. All this power. My God, let me see those hands again. Say, I've got the power. I've got the power. I've got the power of God in me. And no devil in hell is going to stop me from this day forward. He can't 
can't have my mind. He can't have my body. And he definitely can't have my soul. I got the power. Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you available? Look at all that power. If it was just flames of fire back there, this church would be on fire. Look at all that power. And what the Holy Ghost does, and what this abundant life, and I'm done, what this abundant life is all about, is we go through things in our body, but we don't let it get us down. We don't go crazy in our mind. That abundant life keeps us from going crazy when things don't go our way. Keep us from going crazy when life is hard. Keep us from talking about suicide and giving up. That's what this abundant life is about. Keep us off those drugs, looking for that high, because the Holy Ghost will give you a high that no drug can ever give you. Come on, church. Stand up in the power that's already in you. Stand up. Let the devil know what you got on the inside of you. Stand up and show him what you got. Show him what you got. Show him what you got. Show him what you've got. Glory to God. Show him. I will not be defeated. I won't hang my head down low because the power of God is in me. Come on and give him a praise for what he's already done. Hallelujah. Let me, let me say something real quick to help to help you and, and later it probably won't with with uh, my uh, with Sean and Dave and they're gonna say something about this at the table later on but let me say this she probably won't want me to say it but I'm gonna say this to you too brother David <laughs> she was talking about how Back in our early days, we've been married 51 years, so. <laughs> so we've, we've had some rough time. We've had some rough time. But let me tell you this, this might be helpful to some of you. And some of you might see it a different way altogether. And you'll see what I'm about to say in just a second, Brother Dave. Back when she was talking about us having rough times and tough times, and, and I remember the chaplain in England told us, y'all don't need to be married. Y'all, you'll never make it. And that was when we were, we had only been married, what? About 10 years, and we've been married 51 years now. But 10 years, the, the chaplain himself said, you'll never make it. That, that's not what I'm about to say, Brother David. This is what I'm about to say. Back when we were struggling trying to make it in all of that time, I was what they call, and you know what I'm talking about, I was what they call a fast burner. So we talked about this just yesterday, Sean. I'm talking to Lady Ringing now. Y'all can put that down in your notebook. But we were talking about how I was a fa what they call a fast burner. So in other words, uh, there were people in the military that was in the military before I even got in. And I came in and became their boss or whatever. I was burning so fast. And the reason why I was burning fast, fast burner, making rank real fast, is because I thought money would help us make it. 
And and I to, I was talking with Lady Rangan just yesterday, a day before yesterday, whenever I don't know. She said I'm not good with time, but I was talking with her about this. I was saying I made money, a lot of money, but we didn't make it. We still weren't making it. And she said because we some the people, some of the people that were working for me were doing better than me, better than us, and I was making money and that. I constantly try to make rank to make money. And the more money I made, the worse off we did. The worse off we did. And, and let me tell you something. It ain't about the money because peace started to come in our life when we weren't going after the money anymore. And I'm going to say something to you, and some of you will hear different. I make more money now. I make one agency, one agency itself, one agency, Brother David, pay me $7,000 a month. One agency. I ain't never made that kind of money when I was struggling, trying to make it. But one agency now pay me $7,000 a month, one agency. I don't even get a salary from the church because I tell them, we tell them I don't need it because we make so much money. But let me tell you something. We make that kind of money now, but I haven't seen it. You know why? Because I don't care. I don't care about, because I know the money ain't gonna bring me no happiness. I take the money and give it to the church to try to pay off the little bit of mortgage we have left on the church. I don't even, I haven't seen all the money that I make now since 1993. Since 1993. Because I tell you, don't I? I tell you, I don't care. I don't care how much I make. I ask you every once in a while how much I make, but I don't care. Because I know it's not what's going to give me peace. I know it's not what's going to give me joy. Now, $7,000 a month is a lot of money to make somebody happy. That's just one amount of money that I get. And don't ask me for no money because I ain't no, I ain't the one. <laughs> I ain't the one. I don't give out money. <laughs> I ain't the one. I, I, I know some people on the benches probably when I said, I'm one agency give me seven thousand dollars a month. Some people on the benches were saying, Cha ching. <laughs> I'm not the one. I ain't giving out no money. And and I don't and I don't keep it because I give it away as soon as I get it. As soon as I get it, I give church money, I give all kinds. I don't I don't get it. I might have a dollar in my pocket right now. If I have that much, I, pr I doubt if I have a dollar in my pocket. Because I know, let me tell you, all of you, money don't make you happy. Money is not that abundant life for you. And all that time I spent trying to make the money and, and life got worse. But somewhere along the line when I forgot about the money, Stop counting on the money. Stop trying to fast burn, make more money, more promotions, more money, more money. And just start living the life. I was about to tell my wife yesterday, this is the best marriage I ever had in my life. And I wasn't talking about how much money I make. So... I, I, I'm trying to tell you now that it ain't about the stuff. It ain't about the money. And like I said to you, we were taught they, they have mental health days and all that kind of tough stuff. The mental is when you take thought for things. Yeah, yeah. Why? Because as a man thinketh, so are you. So if you think unstable, if you think stuff, see, I was making, I was trying to make the promotions and the money, but I was thinking unstable. Yes, yes, yes. 
And it doesn't matter how much money you make if you're still thinking you are. The Bible says, in your Bible says, take no thought for, take no thought. And, and the reason why we're having so many mental health problems today is because we're taking thought for things. Taking thought. And when you take thought, as a man thinketh, see, you're taking something that's making you think. Do you, I, I was looking at today, I told my granddaughter, I said, don't let a little thing, I don't care what it is, mess up your whole day. Do you know little things, a hot water heater breaking, can mess up your whole day? Can mess up. You, you were planning on having a good day today, but your hot water heater went south, went bad. Now, all of a sudden, you go to sleep that night thinking about how I'm going to get that fixed, or what I'm going to do about that, what, what's going to happen here. And now, all of a sudden, a little thing like a hot water heater. How many of you know that you can get cars? I'm, I'm, I know I'm talking, and I'll be done in just a second. But... How many of you get cars and you get all excited about that new car you got? The first time it break down is it took your whole day. It took your, the, and you know, Sister Linda, you know what I think about a car? Listen to this. This can't be your piece. Do you know how, what it takes to drive a car? You got to pay insurance. You got to pay for a tag. You got to pay you got to pay for gas. You ain't just paying for that car. For, for those cars that sit down in the parking lot, do you know you pay a mint to, to operate those things? Insurance. Tags. Pay the note on the car. And all that's just a drive down the street. You paying a mint. I remember one time when we were trying to when we were trying to make it back in the days we lived in Abilene, Texas. They turned us down for a twelve thousand dollar house. We couldn't, Brother David. We couldn't even afford. We we didn't have enough credit to get a twelve thousand dollar brand new house, but it was twelve thousand dollars back in those days. Can you imagine being? And now we get cars for three times that. But we couldn't even afford a $12,000 house. God wouldn't let us get it because that wasn't happiness. That wasn't happiness altogether. Are y'all understanding what I'm saying? That that you jump through hoops for and given your firstborn for is not going to make you happy. It's not going to make you happy at all. I'm happier with a dollar in my pocket <laughs> than I am all the fast burning and the promotions. Are you following what I'm saying? I'm going to do this and go. If you heard what I said today and understand where your happiness lies, give the Lord a big hand clap for your happiness. <laughs> It's not in the clothes that you wear. It's not in the money in your in your bank account. It's in it's your mental health. 